there's a hotel chain that has a slogan that says, we'll leave the light on for you. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Surgeon and I'm the pastor of Andrew Chapel United Methodist Church in Vienna, Virginia. And I wanna welcome you today to Wednesday's Word. Do you know what hotel chain that is? Motel 6. Now, I've never stayed in a Motel 6 before that I know of, but I like their slogan because that's a slogan of hospitality. We'll leave the light on for you. You know, when I was a teenager and sometimes I was out late at night, my parents left the porch light on for me. And they also left a lamp inside our living room on. They wanted to welcome me back home and let everybody know that they were waiting for me to return home. You know, we even do that for our girls, my wife and I, we do that for our girls. When they're out late, we like to leave the porch light on and a light in the living room on, just to remind them that they're always welcome. And yes, we're waiting for them to come home safely. There's a great, great parable in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. It's the parable, parable of the prodigal son. But really, I like to think of it as more about not the son so much as it's about the father. You probably know the parable. The son takes his inheritance and runs off and spends it all, all, all his father's inheritance and all on just wild and reckless living. And then he comes crawling back home looking for his father's mercy. I wanted to read part of that story to you. Luke chapter 15, beginning in verse 20, it says this. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. And then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you in heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet, and go get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Isn't that a beautiful story? The story of God. That's the story of God, of how much God loves us, how much God is willing to leave the light on for us and wait for us to return home. Or, you know, with this story, it shows the father ran out to greet his son when welcomed him home, so much so that not only did he offer the hospitality of, you know, leaving a light on per se, but what he was doing is he said, go and get the finest robe, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and kill the fatted calf and let us celebrate for this son of mine who was lost is now found. How beautiful is that? What an extension of hospitality, what an extension of love. And in that time, Fathers who had some status weren't always the ones who would run out to greet someone. That was not their custom. They were to stay in the home and let slaves and servants go bring people in. But this father ran off the porch, went out to greet his son, son and hugged him and kissed him. That's not common, yet it is with God. God loves us so. And when we go a little bit wayward, I believe God leaves a light on for us. I believe that God is ready to open his arms and welcome us and hug us and greet us with a holy kiss and give us the finest things in life. And the finest things in life are to be in relationship with our Lord. That's what it's, this is all about. God's love is extravagant. And so know this, my friend. Whenever you wander astray, yes, God will let you go. But know this, 
God will be leaving a light on for you, waiting for you to return home. And let this also be a sign for the church as well. The church should always leave a light of welcome on for all who come and return back. What a powerful story. So know this, God's leaving a light on for you, and I hope you have a great rest of the Lenten season, and we'll talk again soon. God bless you.